The purpose of this example is to demonstrate normal stress analysis for beams with rectangular cross section. The interesting part of this analysis is that we consider not only the service load of 1.5 kilonewtons per meter, but also the weight of the beam. And uh, in our case, we need to figure out what is the minimum size of a square cross section such that the beam can sustain the stress up to 12 MPa and the beam is made of wood and to take into account the weight of the beam we need to know the specific weight of wood. So to take into account the weight we take the original beam and we add to it a uniformly loaded beam the distributed load we denote by q gamma where gamma refers to the specific weight to calculate q gamma we first consider an elementary part of beam of length delta x then the weight of that elementary part is the specific weight gamma times the volume the volume could be written as b squared delta x since the beam has a square cross section and as a result we obtain that the weight per unit length or delta w over delta x is simply equal to gamma b squared Now, we would like to combine two loadings so that we have the load due to the service conditions and the load due to the weight equal to gamma b squared. And as a result, we obtain a beam that is loaded by two uniform loads one is q gamma on the left part another is q plus q gamma let me pay your attention to the fact that in principle i don't need this step i could have analyzed this step separately and this step separately but i prefer to proceed in a manner where i consider the combined load rather than the two individual loads. To compute the stresses, I will start with computing the reaction forces. So I start with a constrained beam. Now I draw a free body diagram for the entire beam. Of course, it involves two reaction forces, Ra and Rb. I also want to pay your attention is that I replaced two and a half meters with L. The reason I like doing it is because this avoids certain confusion with dimensions. Uh, and uh, this is quite useful. Plus it makes the beam analysis maybe a little bit more general and maybe useful if I want to change the length of the beam for whatever reason. At any rate, for now, I will use L instead of two and a half meters. Of course, at the end, once I need to get the numbers, I will replace L with two and a half meters. So sum of the forces equation, Ra plus Rb minus Q gamma times L minus Q plus Q gamma times L the moment about a the force rb counterclockwise this load 
is clockwise, so it comes with minus, and the arm for this load is L over 2. The same goes for the second load, but in this case the arm is 3L over 2. So we have two equations and we solve them for the reaction forces, RA and RB. Now, let me first construct the shear force diagram. So, to this end, I just copy the free body diagram for the entire beam, and I will construct shear force diagram quickly by observing that at this end, the shear force is equal to minus QL over 2. And then from this point, it proceeds with the slope minus Q gamma. At this point, there is a jump to the value of QL plus Q gamma L. And then it proceeds with the slope minus Q minus Q gamma and it arrives at zero. Of course, I like having zero here because there is no uh, force applied at this end. So something is very important about this deck. If I look at it, I can see clearly that the force is not equal to zero anywhere in the middle. So it is zero at this point, but anywhere within the span, the force is not equal to zero. As far as the bending moment diagram is concerned, it means that the derivative of m, which is v, is not equal to zero anywhere within the spans. It means there are no critical points. It means that the maximum bending moment is achieved at the end points only. It is probably clear that the moment here is equal to zero because there is no couple on this end. The moment here is equal to zero because again, there is no couple at this end. And the only candidate for the maximum moment is the midpoint. And that is how I want to proceed. I want to calculate the bending moment at this point and declare that this is the maximum moment. Of course, alternatively, one can proceed with constructing the full bending moment diagram. But here I would like to take an opportunity of showing a shortcut. So to calculate the maximum bending moment, I retrieve the free body diagram for the entire beam. Now I make a cut smack in the middle because that's where the bending moment is maximum. And of course, now I can draw uh, a free body diagram for the right segment and uh, here I show the bending moment MB and the shear force VB. So to determine the maximum bending moment MB, I just write down some of the moments about B that engages the couple MB. And uh, then from this, I can calculate that the moment at B is given by this equation. And now I will conclude that the maximum bending moment is equal to this one. Please note, I drop the minus sign. The reason I can do it is because the beam is symmetric and there is no difference between strengths in tension and compression. In general, and it will be seen in some other examples, we have to be careful about minus sign. But when we have complete symmetry, it's good enough to just 
choose the absolute value of the bending moment. So with the bending moment in place, I can proceed with the stress analysis. I take the generic formula and I calculate the maximum stress by picking the maximum moment and the maximum y. And of course, the maximum moment comes from the previous slide. The maximum y is b over 2 and iz is b to the 4 over 12. And now I proceed with the calculations that give me that the maximum stress is given by this expression. Next, I compare sigma max to the allowable stress. And uh, if I put together these two equations, I obtain an equation that allows me to calculate B. So in this equation, everything except for B is known. Of course, it's a cubic equation, possible to solve by hand, but obviously it's good also to use uh, a numerical solution. So to pick the size of the cross section, let me copy the equation and then I will calculate the answer for the given strengths, specific weight of the wood. Now L is back to two and a half meters and Q is the service load and obtain this answer. I also observe that if gamma were equal to zero, so in other words, I neglect the weight of the beam, I have a much simpler equation, right? I simply take the cubic root of two terms and I get the answer. And I can compare the two cases so please observe the key difference is here gamma is actual here gamma is equal to zero it means it's neglect right? and if you look at the difference this difference is tiny right and one could have concluded that without actually going through solving the cubic equation right or dealing with more complicated loading the reason for that is very simple. We could have calculated from the very beginning the ratio of the two distributed load, Q gamma to Q, and obtained that it's equal to 0.6%. So what this means is that the error of neglecting uh, Q gamma and solving a much simpler problem is of the order of 1% which is certainly acceptable for most engineering purposes.